Welcome back to Houston, Texas, Telespin Family YMCA Men's Quarterfinals as Emmett Pichot goes up against Marco Chavez. My name is Dave Vincent alongside Dave Fink. Do appreciate the fact that you've tuned in to this broadcast today on ESPN and the Watch ESPN app, courtesy of the World Players of Handball, where we are streaming live on your smart device. Of course, your friends and family watching back home, and we appreciate that as well. ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, was visiting their website in between matches, and it's so much new innovation coming from ESPN. Always changing, adding new services, new cable providers added to the network as well, so it, make it, it just makes it easier for fans and viewers, not just for handball, of course, all the other sports, soccer and college football, college sports in general, and so many live programming options for you on the Watch ESPN app. Just, you know, a year ago, there's been some subtle changes that the average viewer probably doesn't really even notice, but if you go on there a lot, you find out that ESPN's really making a lot of cool upgrades. Making it easier for you to view, and these new TVs all are coming with smart capabilities, so you can get a browser right on your TV and watch the internet to include ESPN. A lot of the apps like Hulu Plus and, and others are building their Watch ESPN app right into their program, which makes it so much easier for you to watch at home. You just flip your channel from the regular ESPN channel on cable or satellite and then go right to your smart device on the same TV and still get that same HD quality. And we're providing that handball coverage for you here on ESPN, the Watch ESPN app, formerly ESPN3.com. Do us all a favor, get a hold of all of the people that you've talked to throughout the years about the sport of handball, those that you've been fanatic with, and let them know that they can watch on ESPN. This is the last quarterfinal match of the day, and then we go into the senior semifinals where Marco Chavez, who's on the court right now, will go back to back and play with Tyler Hamill at two o'clock. Andy Shad will go up against Nadi Alvarado at three o'clock, and then back to the semifinals of the pro elite guys. And you could very well see someone like Marco Chavez having to play if he defeats Emmett Pichot that semifinal. Now this match should have started three minutes ago, four minutes ago. Referee for some reason hasn't started yet. Waiting for the referee to go ahead and just start these guys up. They should start right at the top of the hour, but that's not the case here. Emma Pichot coming from the Olympic Club, San Francisco, formerly of Watsonville, California. Marco Chavez from Buena Park, Yoma Linda area of okay. Southern California, representing the Los Angeles Athletic Club. Okay, you guys ready? Okay. This court has been open for about 25 minutes. Just waiting for the referee to start the action on the show court. Marco Chavez in the 40s and in the elite. Are right, you ready, Emmett? Top 16, top eight. Ladies and gentlemen, last quarterfinal of the day. Receiving serve from San Francisco, California, number three ranked pro, Emmett Pichot. Serving from Los Angeles, California, will be the number nine ranked pro, Marcos Chavez. That's the announcement from our referee, Adam Bernhardt, starting the match a little late, although the court's been open for almost 30 minutes now, because Emmett Pichot requested more time to warm up, so our referee gave it to Emmett. Not sure why, but. Zero serves zero. There's that underhand serve from Marcos. Emmett's kind of wrecked Marcos Chavez in recent years on our live broadcast, Dave. Slide out. Oh, um, am I here? I announced zero you in earlier, yes. Zero. So. Hear that? Yeah, you know, he's Short. run into Emmett a couple of times here 
in the race. And it's been close, but hasn't been able to get past First them. First serve, I was wrong. They played last year in Denver in the semifinals, where Emmett won easily. They played here in the quarterfinals a year ago. Emmett won that 25-22, and you remember that one, Dave. That could have gone either way. Yeah, that's true. Point. Emmett told me yesterday he's never played more handball in his One life than he's zero. played in the preparation for this event. He says he plays every day. Of course, you know by reading Marcos's two-minute drill that he also plays every day, mostly big ball. You saw a big ball shot Zero, there. One. Man, that was almost above his head. Hinder, contact, thank you. You know, normally, Dave, I would say that Emma would be the big favorite in this match, but based on what Marcos did yesterday Zero, to Adam one. Bernhard, beating him 15 to two, 15 to zero, you have to think Marcos is in great form. Also keep into it into mind, it's a 15 point game. It just changes things just a little bit. Emmett can't wear you down as much, although he will still wear you down. And that's an over hit from Marcos. But Marcos doesn't have to adjust to the power of Emmett because he plays with it back home against Mondo Ortiz. I mean, he knows what he's in for right when he, he plays Emmett Pichot. You know, Dave, I've heard you say a lot before, if you can One get into a rally zero. with somebody of 10 or more shots, you've got a good chance to win. But One you see Emmett. Zero with these 10 plus shot rallies, and he's got the advantage on almost every shot. Point. And that's what Marcos doesn't want. Three points. Two, zero. Marcos yelling at the referee without turning short. around. That was a short ball. Appeal. And Dave, Both there agree. were not a Second lot of serve. people clamoring to volunteer to ref this match, believe it or not. Surprisingly though, there were a lot of people interested in refereeing the previous match between Paul Brady and Daniel Cordova. Hmm. Want to be a part of history. Oh, that's a nice corner Point. kill. It's dip in though from Marcos Chavez. I thought that he actually made that. No, it has to hit the wall first. Oh, okay. Yeah, Three, sorry. Zero. Could see the confusion. Damn it, tracks that ball That's down. amazing. I didn't think he'd have any chance at that. Marcos somehow gets that ball back to the front wall and Emmett puts it away. Marcos does a fist Point. pump there and is unable to get it to the front wall and now he's saying the ball you slid. Two, you think it was two bounces Emmett's get on oh, the side wall? Here we go. One agrees, mm. two agree, it's a point. Now could Marcos come up to the booth here and challenge that? Yeah, he could. Four, zero. I don't know that we'd even find the shot. We wouldn't. Now that one might take extensive time. Oh, Marcos is out of sorts here early. Point. He feels the serve. I think he feels this one slipping uh, away. Let's be clear. Are you appealing a foot fault? Yes. Okay. So you, bo you both disagree. All right. Second serve. Wow. It's so not a second serve, though. The line, yeah, a foot fault. Oh, fault. yeah, I, I'm, they, I'm confused on what they're right. asking for here. They're talking about a foot fault. Okay. So the, the line judges are now Four looking for foot faults. I've never found zero. a good enough line I've judge. never, I don't know if I've ever seen. I can't even find one to stop texting. Marcos overhits that, but with authority. Now, it, that seems just an odd play to. You're asking for a foot fault appeal from mm -hmm. line judge and the line judges both agree but yeah. the ref never even had a clue yeah. so what's going on here five serves, who's line zero. judging i i don't football know I mean, i'm not saying it now the ref calls a foot fault this is odd well this is what marcos wants is for the no. referee to start looking for those foot faults yeah front your toes Emmett doesn't even know if it's his back foot Second or front serve. foot going over the line does the referee have to tell him when it occurs well i think it's an option Emmett asked I mean, it's just getting to everything right now. Oh. Point. Lord. And the blowout trend seems to be continuing. 6-0. Who would have thought that Paul Brady would have had the closest Short. match of anyone in the quarterfinals? Yeah. Second serve.
point. You're watching this live broadcast Seven, here, game number zero. one. You see Marco still chirping at himself. I'm feeling a footfall. Uh, one agrees, one could not see it. That's a point. One, one agreed, one agreed that it was not a footfall and one did not see it. Eight, zero. Marcos is really, I don't know how a player can focus on a foot fault. Hinder. How can a player focus on a foot fault like Marcos is and return the serve at the same time, Dave? Zero, eight. I thought the referee called a hinder He there. did. Short. And the players just ignored that? Yes. Okay. They did. All right. Emmett was mad at himself and then just gave it to, to Marcos. This is going to get a little bit chippy. I well, believe. Marcos will need to get on the scoreboard before the real chippiness begins because one way chippiness is not really the same. But Emmett just gave that back to Marcos, which means he's sort of neutralizing that chippiness, like you said, that one way thing that's going on. But I don't know, I don't want to be fixated on this, but I know I am about this footfall thing. I'm just finding it odd that a player was, that is defending a power serve can even, how can you even tell if a player is going over on a foot fault? Yes. You're looking at the wrong thing if that's the case. Because well, I've been in there before against guys like Moreno, and Emmett has a good power serve now, hey, and that part of his game's improved. Emmett. How are you looking at someone's foot? I mean. Second serve. Hate to say conspiracy zero, theory, eight. but <laughs> I'd like to find out who. Wow. Who's line judging? And it steps in on the run with a left stiff arm fist, flat Eight, rollout. Zero. That's how you handle that Marco Chavez mid speed lob serve. Point. Nine zero. Emmett looks really good. Yeah. Another ace. Point. Emmett's reverse to the left just seems like it hits Ten, and grabs zero. and stops moving. Even Almost if you're like a sandwich from 100 yards out from the fairway. Well, even if you're lined up over there, you oh, can't wow. do anything with it. Marcos is now all out of sorts. What a strange tournament for these lopsided. 11-0. Remember, last time these two played, it was 21-5, 21-2-Emmett. And now that's just continuing. Marcos did tell me that he was defeating Emmett Pichot here today. Wow. Zero, 11. I'm gonna take it uh, like a step further than we did before. Seven Point. games so far today. Mm -hmm. Games, not matchup, but seven games. Yeah. The scoring line of, of those seven bounce. games in random order. Yeah. Zero for not the opponent. Uh -huh. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Mm. One, 11. Nobody scored <laughs> more than seven points. No, and we even saw a tiebreaker in there. Zero, one, two. Oh, sorry. It's zero, one, two, four, five, six, seven. No three yet. Right. Marcos is going to try to see if he can get three here to Tied fill up. in the gap. Yeah, that'd be like a straight flush. I mean, these are strange score lines. Really mm -hmm. low, very low. 11, one. Point. Dave, could 12, this be the one. event that Emmett Bichot takes out Paul Brady? Short. Based on what we've seen thus far. Second serve. You'd have to give him the best chance he's ever had. Well, it could be the, this could be the event maybe that Sean Lenning defeats Luis Moreno. That might be where yeah. we start first. Mm. Well, I'm looking forward to this afternoon regardless. Yeah, yeah I agree. If everything goes on the I way. I know when Sean and Luis play, they usually you go back home, so probably we won't be 13, able to see you. Mm -hmm. But I'll text you those updates. Wait, hold, hold on. Uh, what was the call there? Yeah, I'm calling a point. Okay. 14 one. That was a strange play. Marco's just letting Emmett, I guess, score the last couple points here, and then 15, it is one. Uh, the conclusion of game number one with Emmett Pichot winning 15-1 to one in wow. a Literal, literally a 10 minute first game because Emmett yeah. wanted extra time to warm up on a 30 minute open court and now we are <laughs> back 
out into the crowd here. That was so quick, it almost felt like it didn't happen. Well, there's Mark Wahlberg, Dave fresh off of his most recent project. But Dave, I'm, my phone is now blowing up. Got people asking me, why doesn't Marcos focus on the actual ball rather than the foot of Emmett? So apparently you're not the only one yeah, that's well, I, fixated. I just, I, just playing against guys that hit the ball hard, I almost think it's impossible to look at the, the foot. Now, would this be a tactic that he no, could be using as gamesmanship just to try just, to get in the head of Emmett? I think he's just frustrated. And when you're frustrated, you're not rational. The only, the only thing that I think of here that uh, would make you believe that there was some truth to it is because when he appealed, both line judges saw it as well, which then made me think, how in the heck can you appeal something and see it yeah. and also defend it and, and play it? It's just very hard to do. Dave, I want to welcome in the WPH Pittsburgh Handball League that's watching, tuned in. They are locked in, Dave, on their smart TV at Amerifit Handball Club. Well, Joe Del Sardo, a good friend of yours, oh, yes. Dave. Very close. I've watched all of his YouTube videos. Well, have you seen his interception that he caused in the high school playoffs that sent his team to the semifinal? I will actually load it up for well, you right I, now. I was on the ESPN YouTube channel. Yeah. And I was watching some amazing catches that he had at Pitt. Yeah, no, this is actually him playing cornerback. He was wow. He was in a Darrell Rivas type role. Uh huh. Just a perfect split second hit separating the ball from the receiver leading to a incredible interception. We're gonna stay right here as game number two coming up right around the corner. Between Marco Chavez and Emmett Pichot. This is a quarterfinal matchup. It seems like these guys played every other tournament against each other somewhere along the way. I don't have one. Hold on. I'll I'll tell you, one very pleased spectator is Jessica Bichot, Emmett's lovely wife. She's also his coach, personal trainer, therapist, and she gives second-by-second second updates of the scores to her entire family as well as his. That text message right there is going out to 103 people. Wow. Yeah. She could actually just tell them to watch. Yeah. It's the uh, same phone. Game number two, Emmett serving, zero, zero. Well, they might be watching, but they might not know what Emmett said during that three-minute break. Okay. Emmett might have needed some water, and they need to know that. Okay. How hydrated is our guy? Maybe she should text us, and we will. I'm not letting it go, apparently. I wish she didn't. Now, Dave, Marcos is doing what you've always suggested which is, hey, just take the ball up to the roof and, you know, slow it down. Right it worked that rally, ended with a corner kill. Zero, zero. Marco Chavez, underhand, uppercut fist. This is where he's dangerous right there, revolving door. Yeah, you know, Dave, I know as a, as a great handball player yourself, you understand all the mental challenges in, involved. But when you beat a really good player so easily in the first game, you know, 15 to one or 15 to two, in some ways it puts more pressure on you. you. You feel like, how am I gonna duplicate that? I mean, we've talked about this before, I'm sure, but you know, you shoot a 65 zero, and zero. then what are you gonna do the next round? I mean, it's Short. it's hard to, to get yourself grounded again. Second serve. And you also add to that that your opponent is now Got nothing to lose. He's been embarrassed, so he's just going to come out and free roll. Yeah, it's a, it's a strange feeling. Don't like it, but I do like it when you win that first game and One, then you jump out zero. to a big lead in the second game. Oh, that's because nice. Because it, it almost says, I am what you thought I was. Uh -huh. Point. And now you're going to have a lot of fighting to do because, you know, things are coming easy. and, and, and So I, I like when that other thing happens. It does mm -hmm. Not very often. Two, but, yeah. zero. Two to zero here, game two. You know, I think Marcos doesn't realize this is a different Emmett right now. Point. Well, Emmett's just stepping into every shot. Well, he's he just hitting with so much conviction and confidence. Three, zero. 
the two most impressive players that we've seen so far in this tournament are Emmett and Paul Brady. We said that one other time, and that was at the Worlds wow. in Portland. Side out. 2009, we both felt they were the two sharpest that we saw, and Emmett Zero, unfortunately three. got defeated by Paul. No, I, I didn't he think was sharp up to that point when, they, when he faced Paul. Well, he did beat Robbie McCarthy there in the round of 16. Two easy games. I thought it was Alan Garner that was the star of that show. Remember Alan Garner going through. Well, he didn't Luis go through Moreno. Luis Moreno. He didn't go through him. That was a tiebreaker. Well, I'm just saying, no, it was two games, 19 and 19. Side out. Also defeated Three, Dave zero. Chapman in that event. Owen Kennedy, I believe, en route to the finals. But right now it's the Emmett Pichot show. Thank you. So polite is Emmett. Marcos is not even sweating yet. Marco Chavez trying to get on the scoreboard here, only scoring one point in the first game. Mm. And remember, he put a zero on Adam Bernhardt. Zero, earlier. So this is three. a weird game where you can defeat a guy like Adam Bernhardt and put a zero on him, uh -huh. and then get a one put on you by somebody in your next round. Side out. I and think, and Emmett's saying he got that. And I think he did. I think they're gonna come to us. One screen, one agrees, side out. I don't Three, necessarily zero. like that play, appealing someone's get. Been in that position. Yeah, but if you saw it differently, you have yeah, to. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, Marcos thinks he saw two of them already. And some of that is old age. And that's a nice get right there from Marcos. Emmett <laughs> tries to thread the needle to that left wall. He didn't really have to hit the ball there, did he? That was the right shot. Zero, three. Can't be upset with the shot selection. I think he hit it Zero, well, three. too. Just came up, missed it by an inch. And what this game comes down to, Dave, really is Point. amazing shot. Who can earn setups off their return of serve and who can defend the serve? Because yeah. if you're able to defend the serve, like Paul Brady does, and then also get setups and aces One, on your serve, three. it's a short day for you, no matter what. There's Marco starting in some of that shenanigans. Short. Downplaying himself, trying to get you out of your game. I, don't, I think Emmett's too smart at this point in his Second career serve. to put you know, up some of that. Emmett won the first game easily last night against John Iglesias and lost the next game. And he was totally out of sorts after losing that second game. And you saw him, Dave. No, I, he looked like he was about ready to cry. Yeah. But that's that's not because John was telling him he was making good shots and talking to the crowd and bumping himself up either. That's well, a, a new camera angle that we have for those at home. Wow. And another nice Point. shot from Marcos. I'm surprised he didn't put him his hands up in the air for that one as well. Two, three. You only do it on the first one. That's a terrible serve from Marcos. And you see Emmett's in control Side of that out. rally all the way. When you're having to lunge and dive at your first strike, it's not yeah. going to bode well for you <laughs> Three, scoring two. points. That's a setup when you do that on your serve there. Yeah, if you're hitting a good serve, you should be able to step into your next shot. Ender. Is that unavoidable? Mm -hmm. Technically, by the rules. Well, he could have gone to the right. Right, and that's what I mean. There's a wall. But he decided to go to the left. Three, two. The referee just played it over. Well, a referee is a Harvard law graduate, so it's hard to argue against that. I mean, you win almost every case before the trial even starts when you've got Harvard well, on your resume. Before the match started, he came up to me and said, say one thing bad about me and I'm going to sue you. <laughs> yeah. Consider this the cease and desist. Mm. So I'm Four, actually two. didn't see it. Mm. Football. Well, Emmett doesn't like it, but it is a rule. Hey, Emmett does not like that rule. In fact, Dave, in Australia, there is no footfall rule. 
and the guys serve. will actually get a running start and run into the front wall while they're serving. <laughs> I don't. I know that you've seen that. Or yeah. I'm not sure if you have played outside there, but it's not an advantage when oh, you stand into the up. front wall and hit it. Right. I played inside, but it was the talk of the tournament where they where they had police officers there trying yeah. to enforce the don't go over the foot fault line uh, rule. Yeah. So I, I understand a little bit from that angle, but. Well, in their three wall game, they actually get a running start kind of like cricket. You know, when they're bowling, that's what you call pitching in cricket, mm -hmm. Dave. And they are so close to the front wall that sometimes their follow through hits Two, the front wall. Four. Their hand. I don't know how that's an advantage. There's the foot fault that was called on Emmett right there. But I do believe that it's a, an advantage to step over the foot fault line Side out. here in the four wall court because it allows you to be two or three inches closer to the front wall, which means you can hit it lower on the Four, front wall. But you can two. also create an angle that could give you a crack serve. Well, although yeah. Emmett wasn't going for a crack serve, though, and that's what I think is what frustrates Emmett. Well, I don't think Emmett looks at it that way, but. I think there definitely is an advantage. And Emmett's just too quick. Ooh. Oh, Marcos looked like he not only tripped, but something happened there to his left his left leg. I don't think so. Was Just there any an contact on fall. that or not? Emmett quick to Point. answer that. That was nice. He answered very nicely that question. Let's see if Marcos gets up gingerly here, but I was thinking hamstring or mm, quadricep. I don't, like I don't like to hear that. Marcos had a strange little giddy up there right before he yeah. jumped. Go ahead. Like his leg kind of did yeah. this strange little thing. Left leg. Yeah. I used to dive. And then, and you then I turned 37. Well, I've been waiting to use that. Uh, and you actually just well, I jumped right in before I could even finish. I set myself up, and then there you are. Just well, I used to dive, I and then I'm I, just gonna make a note and there. And that, that got good. So didn't need well, to. that's your line, but I got my own, which you didn't Here, even let here's me Here's the replay. I'm sorry, I'm still not going to watch Marcos's left leg there. Okay, he did slip. And then he reaches back and touches his knee, and I think he hyperextended his knee just a little bit on some wet floor. You saw that he was running and his foot slid out of underneath him and that probably hyperextended it just from the look. Well, look at that replay one more time here on ESPN. And I don't think he's hurt, but it's more one of those things that it surprises you and you're afraid it's gonna hurt. Here's the replay. And Marcos Right there, his left leg slips out of underneath him. Mm -hmm. And then he reaches back. Oh, yeah. It is 5-2. That's the kind of thing that could be sore tomorrow and for a couple weeks, that hamstring. Just that slight tear can make it feel like, you know, you've, you've got major problems. Wonderful camera ang angle here. Of Larry David, yeah. actually. We have a lot of superstars. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, those I mean, that... Just right, so home far say, today. How, how does the WPH folks know, you know, the yeah. Jake Plumbers and the Art Howes and right. Larry David? Well, we just, we're friends with them. We, yeah. it's, it's an odd. And Mark Wahlberg, yeah. who you well, saw earlier. Yeah, we saw that. He's wearing Edel gear. I mean, you thought Art Howe was going to be the biggest star. We saw no. that he was just, you know, a regular guy. I mean, which one's bigger? Uh, Mark Wahlberg, who yeah. we have right. here, and then Larry David sitting there on the phone yeah. talking to Jerry. Well, you know, I might be biased, but Larry is my favorite, so. I'm going to have to save Larry. But, you know, I know you're a big Mark Wahlberg fan back to the Marky Mark days. So, you know, for you it might be different. It's I considered of myself one of the funky bunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's how yeah. much I favor Mark. Used to be the new kids on the block when he yeah. was not really on the team, on the uh, squad there, but yeah. sort of one of the, you know. Yeah, what troubles me, though, is that you had his Calvin Klein poster up in your room. That, to me, was a little bit odd. I mean, not odd. I mean, that's not, something wrong with it. Now it sounds off. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't so odd. <laughs> Emmett Pichot with the Olympic Club symbol there on his Resuming chest. Resuming play, the score is 5-2. He proudly represents the OC in Northern California. We'll be heading up there in just a little less than three weeks. Side out. It's a nice kill shot there from Marco Chavez. No effect of any type of injury with that leg. But after cleaning these Two, floors five. off extensively mm -hmm. and ha almost having a five-minute break there, yeah. there's the first point scored since. 
since 25 after the hour and more cleaning going on here in center court. Emmett is always well hydrated, so he sweats profusely. Two serves, five. Goes through more gloves in one game than most people do in an entire tournament. Yeah, Emmett's one of those guys you don't want to sponsor <laughs> with a glove sponsorship. Most players say, yeah, I'll take three gloves, and Side Emmett out. say, I'll take a 30 pair. That'll yeah. just get me through a match uh -huh. and a half. Yeah. Five, two. I mean, Emmett literally in his, in his bag has about $1,000 worth of handball Second gloves. Serve. Look at that great Point. swing. That's that's the old Emmett. That's now. Old, new. Yeah, that's now Six, part of the new. Two. Six to two here, game two going short. to 15. That ball was short. You know, Dave, the conditions here are so great Second serve. in these courts. And you say, well, what's the difference between one indoor court and another? For some reason, the temperature here, the side out, maybe not a lot of humidity. The walls don't slide. It's not too cold. Two, it's not too six. hot. So they really are great conditions to play. You know, you play some places in the winter, Dave, and the club may not use the heat. You know, it's, it takes you half an hour to warm up. Oh, there's that great shot nice. from Marco Chavez. Emmett hits his face directly into that left wall. That was a nice little cutter. But Emmett doesn't want to give Marcos the satisfaction that he can get away with hitting shots like that. So Three, even if Emmett six. didn't return that, he showed him, I'm there. I saw that you were hitting that shot, and I went for it. Side up. Comes back with the return of serve kill. Six, three. Side Emmett out. almost tracked that ball down. Marcos didn't like how fast Emmett jumped up. Gives a little look to the referee. See, you see Marco saying, I think there's an avoidable there. You can't just jump up in front of my shot like that. Mm -hmm. we had Take a, a look at it if we can. Yeah, the replay of just the last two shots pretty much does it. Marco's just chirping a little bit at the referee. Emmett keeping his mouth shut. But you know Marcos, he's, he's talking to Emmett here when he's cleaning off the floor. Just little tiny things. This is where Emmett goes down. And watch now Emmett jumping up there and Marcos had to change a shot not to hit Emmett. And if he's saying, well, Three, if I hit him and you're going to call the avoidable, you should just call it anyway mm -hmm. because I think it makes the referee's job easier when you let the guy just finish the rally and don't have to call the avoidable. Point. And Dave, we've seen Marcos lose badly in the first game and come back and win matches. I know firsthand. Four, six. Actually. Well, Marcos will keep trying things until mm -hmm. he figures out what it is that he needs to do against you on that particular day. Other players just keep doing the same thing. Hinder. There's contact. And just when you listen to Marcos in the booth talk about how you Four, need to be changing six. your serves, you need to be changing your shots, it's, he's always thinking the wheels are turning. Oh, my. Point. And, Dave, uh, we've been over this before, but... If we're going to call bad bounces, Five, is that not six. a bad bounce? Well, did it hit underneath the door and yeah. flatten out? The uh -huh. ball never even came back. No. That's what I mean. No. Well, it's. I just don't know. I just feel like it's so arbitrary that it's a bad bounce off the back wall, but that's not a bad bounce when it gets trapped under the door. Yeah, see, to me, six, it, it really is, five. but nobody in ham. In fact, there's people listening now that are just shaking their heads saying, no, that's not a bad bounce. It's almost. Point. That that has been given so long to players is just that well that just happens. I mean, there's a crack Seven, underneath that five. door. And that's well, yeah, the, the door actually happened. has a little elevated crack because they want the air to flow through there or whatever the case is. Ender. Therefore, it, it's it, it does generate a bad bounce. Emmett does have a bad neck this tournament. He said he could hardly move it, and then you saw him just holding it there after he Seven, ran into Marcos. Five. Seven to five here, game number two. Well, Marcos didn't like that last call, and I kind of agree with him because he hit a great shot down the left, and Emmett was pinned 
because of his bad court position, that was a great Side shot out. for Marcos. But, you know, it, Emmett was pinned, and there was contact, but then again, Emmett can't have the entire court. Marcos pinned him for a reason and took that shot with his left hand, so Five, he was pinned. Seven. That's where I think that even though the ball wasn't down, you know, Marcos had the Side position. Out. And that was a, responded. That was an amazing kill. response. Seven to five. Bichot sponsoring or sponsored by Seven representing the five. Olympic Club in San Francisco. You said it earlier, and Marco Chavez representing the LAAC, the Los Angeles Athletic Club. Sister, I would assume sister club, but might not be part Point. of the same system. Uh, what part of the serve are you appealing? Football. He's appealing to football. Both agree. What? It's a point. He's, they played a 10-shot rally, and Marcos is thinking about a football, not even a short. Well, I don't know how you can see it and the ball at the same time. I mean, if he aces you, that's one thing. I but think at this point it's too late. You already appealed. Well, I'm telling you, you just appealed, and they told you it was, you know, they agreed. So that's a point. Well, that's a good call. He wanted to go to time video out. replay, and I think Marcos will come right in here and say, can he do this? I think he can. I mean, yeah. He referee can. is also a lawyer, so he's yeah. saying, well, you appealed once. You can't keep appealing. We will take an instant replay. Well, the referee has to call for an instant replay, if, and the referee and, and the player obviously have a, a, a problem with that. So, <laughs> so let's get the replay ready here. We're actually just in a studio in Tucson. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how a, a player can come and talk to the play-by-play. -play. Okay, I don't know what's being appealed, so I need a to hear it fall. from the. It's a football. I need to hear it from the referee oh, himself. Okay. But yeah, of course, a ref. If a player wants to use video appeal, they can do it anytime. Yeah. You can go to your regular appeals and not like right. it. I mean, that's yeah, that's the point of the yeah. replay. You don't have to circumvent yeah. the linesman to do your video. Right in football, they would have line judges come out and they yeah. might. Rule go. against a call, and then somebody will say, no, I'm appealing that, right? Yeah, throw Challenge the red flag. Yeah. He just threw the red flag, came into Tucson to do it. We need to hear the referee ask us for this appeal, but let's just go ahead and do it anyway nonetheless. There's, it's a video appeal, and the referee needs to ask for it. I, we're not going to grant it. But it was not a foot fault anyway. Emmett's feet were well within both lines. So even had he used his appeal there, he would have lost. I mean, Emmett wasn't even touching the line there. Okay, well, I, I was too busy talking to fans oh. here. Twitterverse, I forgot about that. I'd like to see that replay one more time if we could. Very frustrating that the... Okay. I mean, Davey's not even close to the line there. No, and, and plus, I, I wouldn't think that there would be any means to overturn that. I mean, All there's right. not enough Resuming evidence play. anyway, because oh. we're not looking at the it from down eight, that line. Five. Clearly, he... His size, 10 shoes, were not even close to coming over that line. Side out. And Marcos got what he wanted, though, which was two minute completely timeout. distract Emmett. And Emmett went for a crazy circus shot that we haven't seen him attempt this season. Five Emmett's been so disciplined. Eight. Those are the kind of shots we saw Emmett oh. go for. That was a foot fault. Point. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, that was a foot fault. That's Six, eight. when the video replay would yeah. actually show you what a foot fault looks like. Another Point. ace. And now, since Marcos made that whole <laughs> commotion, <laughs> he's earned a side out and two aces. Let's, if we could go back two serves. No, I understand. I, I don't know. <laughs> and now Marcos is upset. But I you mean, went ahead and appealed the booth. If we could go back and look at Marco Chavez's serve from two serves ago, which isn't too far back because it only took, what, three shots well, to get two serves. Both serves were Well, the, no, the first one definitely was. Okay. Second one, I don't think so. But right. I know our broadcast van has super slow-mo, and you'll see a, what a real foot fault looks like yeah, on video. And this is this. how you can tell that you can't say oh. <laughs> inconclusive <laughs> evidence. This right here is what a foot fault looks like. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, if he, somebody would have came and said, I want to appeal that. Uh-huh. That would be easy for us to say then yes we or would no. From Tucson, and then go to New York. Go to New York and, yeah. and see if they push the red button. Mm -hmm. Well, don't forget in New York, Dave, they have multiple camera angles that we don't see. Well, I don't know where those cameras are. I mean, yeah, no, they're they've got the helicopter hero. Resuming play. <laughs> score is seven. <laughs> the Phantom Two eight. with vision. Yeah. Short. See, that's what I would call a footfall there. 
Now, that one would be a little Second bit closer, serve. but still, you see what I mean. It doesn't help that Marcos is wearing the same color shoes as the footfall line. Point. And this is what Marcos does. They've, he somehow finds his way into a match. Well, that's all part of the Eight shenanigans. Turn. Coming okay. in here, getting yeah. the referee. Emmett doesn't, you know. He's out rocking Emmett right now. And by that, I mean with the referee shenanigans. Well, the only person foot faulting in this match is Marcos. And yet somehow he's up nine to eight. And there's another one. And it's as though when Marcos starts with his shenanigans, his velocity picks up by 15 miles per hour. All of a sudden now he's dictating play with power. Nice ceiling shot there from Marcos. Whereas pre-Chavez shenanigans, he's just sort of passive and floating the ball around the court. I think that was a slight miss hit from Emmett. It's also a 41-year-old Marco Chavez not looking back and watching his opponent because I think he could have got that if he wasn't facing the front wall. Eight, nine. This is the most points scored in a single game today mm -hmm. is eight points by an opposing, opponent losing. Oh. Marcos would like to have that one back. That's a very difficult shot nine, because if you don't nine. flat roll it, ball pops up, hits the floor, then the sidewall. Wow. I like that shot from Marcos. Amazing Emmett shot. catches up to it fairly easy, though. Look at how Marcos runs that away from Emmett. Oh, look at that. Wow. Marcos slid again on that wet floor before he goes in for that little underhand paddle re-kill, and that we're going to watch a replay of that. Sensational rally from Houston, Texas at the YMCA. We're on ESPN, the Watch ESPN app. Video courtesy of the World Players of Handball at WPHlive.tv. No, Here's that sure. overhand, Tommy Hawk. And, and that's not that. easy to do there, Marcos. And he has the Dave Chapman follow through where you just lock it in by walking right towards it to make sure that the ball is screened. Marcos knows there's a little bit of wet stuff right in that area. He slipped on it as he went in for that paddle re-kill. Now Marcos will be serving at nine to nine. When we do travel around at different stops, Marcos is a fan favorite. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fans do like how he engages them into nine. every single one of his nine. matches. Don't forget, he put his hands up in the air when he finally scored a point here in game number two, and now he finds himself tied at nine. But it's like you said, that's all part of the show. Yeah. Kinder. What, I don't know where that hinder was at. Emmett was in front of Marcos. I'm not sure. There, where was the hinder there? I, I think Adam might have missed that one, actually. Oh, okay, well, I don't talk bad about him. I, no, I see that you do, all. clearly. Nine, I nine. said he might have missed it. Oh, oh, That's okay. talking bad. I mean, I guess it is. That was a foot fault. But you don't talk bad. I'm not talking bad. No. I'm just not at all. Just reporting. Oh, that's a huge setup. And Emmett does not put it away. Oh, no. That's Point. And Emmett is now like the football is from the AFC Championship game. He's completely deflated. I know you think it doesn't matter when Ten, the balls are deflated, nine. but it does matter when a player is deflated. Mm -hmm. You would agree with that. Oh, I do agree with that. Okay. Not, just, not the balls, though. It's okay to deflate the footballs. I don't get into other sports politics. I just talk handball. Hmm. Side out. That was a nice shot from Emmett, too. I do find it odd that Nine, ten. you pro players can bounce the ball one time, handball we're talking about, and know whether it's lopsided or flat. But that Tom, but Tom, but Tom Brady, Tom Brady, who's arguably okay, the greatest shot, quarterback shot. ever, can't even tell when two pounds that's is out of the like ball. A line call. Now that was definitely unavoidable. Yeah, but uh, Emmett's right here. Let's take that, an instant replay call, here. Though. It's not like is it across. Now, this is also part of Emmett's shenanigans. No, Emmett's too. right here, though. No, I, I agree, but no, I don't think the referee right. already it's explained not, it. It is what it is. Yeah, he's not going like, to change it at this point. Go ahead. Now, uh, see, Emmett's asking for a replay on this. He's coming in here. I mean, he'll be in Tucson. Yeah, I know. Okay, so you're bracing yourself for this because I know you can't stand it. Well, it's it. not reviewable. I know. 
as always, as always, this is not a reviewable play. Now so both players are in the booth. This Dave. is not a reviewable calls, and the players both know that. They played the game forever. This is not a reviewable play, nor can they appeal this play. Never have been able to do it in the sport of handball. So I, I would be very surprised to hear a player come in and actually uh, to try to do that. I would be very, very surprised if a player came in and tried to do that. Why would you be surprised when they both were in this booth? I mean, won't you expect that? I was that? talking to you. I'm just oh, saying really? I would be <laughs> completely surprised that they would try to peel that on video. When was the last time you saw well, Tom Brady and Peyton Manning in the instant review okay. booth? Okay. So I mean, actually get up nine, through ten. the crowd into the booth. Well, no player asked me anything. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, nobody said anything. I just no. said it's not reviewable. Oh my, what a shot. There's a fist pump from Marcos. Ten. This is well, why you bring your popcorn <laughs> in your big gulp. <laughs> I, I knew to do that. Actually. Yeah, no, I actually. I brought my microwave. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's more important. Now, in the past, when we've slogged through some long matches, these have been almost torturous. But at this point today, this is a welcome refresher. I know, Dave, that your whole aura has been ruined by the players coming into this booth. I didn't even know they are here. <laughs> Ten serves nine. I'm actually patting myself on the back. Point. But that's not unusual. <laughs> not from... Not from the supposed players coming into the broadcast yeah. booth trying no, to play the case with us. I, <laughs> I mean, that I knew that when I said that the referee in here was better than Tucson. Ooh. And it completely went downhill. I knew yeah. it would before I said it, okay. and I allowed myself to yeah. say it anyway. Okay. That was a terrible error for Marcos, who Nine, had the 12 11. point in his back pocket right there. And instead, now Emmett's back in the service box. Oh, well, that took care of that. You saw, you heard Marcos yesterday watching Mondo saying, I wish I had a left like that. Well, that was yeah, he the does. left that he wanted. I give Marcos a lot of credit, 11, Dave. He just finds nine. a way to hang in matches. Seems like he's outgunned. It seems like maybe his time has passed, but it never Either. is. Well, this is clearly they need the towel there. But, Dave... Can Marcos do that? I mean, just hit the ball and stand there? He knew that wasn't a good shot. Yeah. He can? Yeah, the ref's not going to call it. No, but I'm course. saying if, if by the rules, if you were the ref, uh, <laughs> hypothetically, that's never happened. But let's no, say you, you were know the ref. I call avoidables instantly. Okay, so I. And forfeits. Bottom. Yeah, I'd, okay. Yeah. I think that 11, the one that they were nine. trying to do the video appeal on was obvious and unavoidable. But that one right there, not as obvious. But I, I still think it falls under the category okay, here. Okay, go ahead. Uh, now a two-minute glove change. Quick Marcos has missed two setups that would have given him the 12th point here. If it, not sure. failure. If, you're, if your shoelace breaks, you get a timeout. His glove is. That's what he said. <laughs> Marcos is smart enough to know that Emmett said the glove was broken, and the referee said, well, he said it was, but the referee should say, let me see it. Correct? Because this is an equipment change. This isn't a glove change. This is a, my glove's broken. Change. Okay. And the referee said, make it as quick as you can. That's why he said, let's, let's hurry it up here. It's, it's, he's blocking it. surprised we haven't seen Emmett engaging at all. Normally it's Emmett that kind of takes the lead on this sort of banter. But I guess, Dave, it's like you said, when you have two of the same Resuming people in play, the nine, same room, 11. one of them takes charge. Terrible hit from Marcos. Emmett doesn't do much better. Wow. Oh, 
Marcos has to be frustrated with himself there. Point. That was a great rally, but Marcos should have won it three times. Emmett also can say the same. He did end up winning it, but Emmett could have won it two or three times before finally winning it on the 23rd stroke. And remember, a David, here. could have been Marcos up 12-9 twice. There. Instead, it's 10-11, Emmett Peixote. And this is what we saw last year at this event when these two played. It was 20-all, playing to 25. Marcos missed a couple shots by an inch. Emmett goes up and ultimately goes on to win that match 25-22. In fact, it was actually 22 all at one point. Marcos missed a couple, and it just seems like Mar maybe he has a thing when he plays Emmett. Gets close, he's able to get close, but then not able to get over the hump, and we'll see if it that's the case here. Well, it seems like hours ago, but it, Marcos could 11. have been serving at 12 to nine. Right, twice. Two setups he skipped. Wow, that ball really went to the left there. Now Marcos is starting some trash talking here. And you remember 11, what happened when Marcos trash talked Naughty in Tucson. He completely dominated the rest of the match. As soon as he started the trash talk, Naughty never scored again. That's an interesting serve. I like that shot. Well, I thought Marcos overhit that. And Dave, what's, what are your thoughts on trash talking? I know that you're 12, not 10. completely opposed to it. No, I mean, it, I, I think it, there's a safe way of doing it. You know, player, you, Marcos thinks that Emmett picked up two balls earlier, as you recall. He could be bringing something like that up right now. I think there's a safe ways of doing it. Side Emmett out. needed that shot. Yeah, See, that's a that nice was, flat rollout from that Emmett. That was a big one for Emmett because the game hung in the balance really for Emmett. If he misses that shot there, Marcos probably goes on and wins this 10, game. 10, 12. But see, Emmett's playing very quiet. You know, he's, yeah. not, he's not jarring back to Marcos, which makes me surprised that Marcos would have so much anger toward Emmett. Emmett's not doing anything wrong, you know? Yeah, I agree. So Usually it takes two to tango, but right now Marcos is doing Ender. everything that he thinks can be done to stay in this match. And none of it's illegal. It's actually pretty entertaining. 10, well, it's 12. Got me on the edge of my seat. Short. Marcos finally did score his 12th point, by the way. It took him five innings to do it. <laughs> yeah. Second serve. Not sure what Marcos was trying to do with that shot. Emmett just flat point. rolls it in front of him. 11 to 12 now, Pichot. And somehow Emmett has a way of making every match he 11, plays a minimum 12. of an hour. I mean, that's just a given. Yeah, Emmett's saying, Point. if you're going to throw yeah. that little soft stuff, I'll just do this tomahawk into the corner. That's one of my shots. Yeah, big mistake 12, there for Marcos. 12. Could have done anything with that shot and pinned himself behind Emmett and just gave him a point. Another big setup for Emmett. Yeah, Emmett won't lose this rally. Side out. Well, I'm wrong. Well, Emmett's frustrated with himself there because he had a huge setup. Marcos just read it perfectly, ran around Emmett to the right, and Emmett still <laughs> hit it to the right. Emmett dives to the ground. Adam throws the towel. Uh, obviously, a referee can't throw it all the way up there because it's aerodynamics. Yeah. Emmett says towel while the floor ball, the you know the the towel's on the floor. Mm -hmm. So Marcos just goes over and kicks it so it rolls right up underneath him. Mm. <laughs> so here's the towel that you wanted. Referee did not call a hinder there, and he could have. And we would yeah. have seen an explosion had he well, called a Well, that's why Emmett hit the ground, because he was wanting to hear that call, and he didn't get it. And I think he just slammed his hands on the ground. But Emmett was upset with himself. He wasn't upset with the ref there. He knew that wasn't a hinder. But if that hinder was called, Marcos would have erupted. There. Oh, of course. I'd like to see the replay of the 12, ref. <laughs> Marcos kicking their towel underneath Emmett. That's part of the entertaining part. 12 to 12. Good call. There, it's And why call. does he call it now at 12-12? Well, he's been foot-falling like that all game. Both agree. <laughs> Marcos. Second, second serve. I mean, they were going to have a committee meeting to recall that short line, the Marco Chavez line. Who's they, just so we're clear? Houston Handball Club. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Beautiful left-handed kill shot from <laughs> Emmett Pichot. 
Yeah, it was a great straight left kill. Straight 12, down the left 12. wall. I believe, Dave, whoever scores the 13 point first will win this game. Wow, oh, that ball just died. And this will be the 13 point for Emmett right here. And he skips it in. Oh my gosh. That's about eight feet that into is the ground. Just almost impossible to believe. Now, if you hit that ball four or five it inches look high like it from here. and the rally keeps going, it's a bad shot. But to hit it in the ground is just stunning. Well, it was a miss hit because that's why the ball's wet. Referee said, well, it doesn't look like his gloves are wet 12, from here. 12. Marco says, well, obviously it is because it's wet. We just had an equipment change, so I don't. Well, I think it was a miss hit that might have hit oh up near his gosh. palm. And there's That's a 13th point, Dave. So that is going to be, we're going to no, go to a tiebreaker. Yeah, I'm done. I'm I actually now you have a 12-minute break. <laughs> is 13, that another union 12. rule? <laughs> 13 to 12, oh, going to 15. Serve. You have to win by two. Oh my gosh, that's the third air Side out. Marcos has made serving in his last five innings 12, on huge 13. setups. That would have been three more points this game definitely oh, would have been That over. was a huge overhit serve from Emmett. That's a good return from Emmett up there. That's an amazing shot. Oh, inside right out, goes, Marcos hits an amazing shot and then he gives himself a fist pump up there. I think if you ask Marcos, he would take his back wall game over anybody in the world. He's very confident off the back wall. Just seems like he can put the ball in a dime 90 miles per hour off the back wall, particularly with his right hand. Well, that one was up near the foot fault line, I mean the Chavez line, and yeah. he went inside out, hit that ball back down the right wall, Emmett not even expecting that whatsoever, but it wouldn't have mattered. It was only about two inches high anyway. And then he gave himself a huge fist pump like he was char starting a chainsaw. 13-12. Mm. Which I think you missed. No, I did see that. Big air there from Emmett. That Point. was a nice shot right there. Emmett tries to slide in. See, I, I like that play from Marcos on the back wall shot because he doesn't try and be cute and hit an inch high. He just says, I'm gonna hit this as hard as I can straight down the wall, six inches high. If you can get it, you know, I'll just kill the next one. But Emmett wasn't able to get it. Dave, what's Marco saying to Emmett here? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think it's all part of the head games that Marcos plays. 14 serving 12. I, I've been in the court with Marcos. This is game point to force a tiebreaker. Great shot right from out. Emmett, and a terrible serve. I've been in, in these situations with Marcos, and he says things like, um, are well, you finding the walls 14. are getting slick? I mean, just get you, it, it's so patronizing yeah. uh -huh. that he wants to engage you in, to his side of the, of the conversation. Serve. And it's something about that, it's not illegal, it's not cheating, he's asking you a serious question. Are, are these walls slick, or is it cold in here to you? Just, now you're on his team, mm -hmm. you're having a conversation, yeah. you know? Hard to compete against a guy that's your friend, because that's what he's doing. Oh, Emmett scrapes his hand on the wall. It's a great rally. Oh, oh look at that God. kill right yeah. there. Chavez now going back into the server's box. That was threading the needle. Now oh, that was an amazing shot. And to be able to hit that shot 14, after such an intense rally. Remarkable. I saw a slide. Oh, saw my it. gosh. Uh, Marcos, what, is he just going to walk right into the booth and try to get I don't see too much I don't complaint. think that's something you can appeal. You can't. Right? No, you can't. That's a referee's call. Not going to be able to appeal a slide. And, and secondly, we... The, the player only has one appeal per game, and you have to win your appeal. But the last appeal wasn't officially counted because the ref didn't call for it, right? <laughs> yeah, but which player is appealing what? And in, in Marcos is appealing that it did not slide. So that would have given him the He's not arguing, 12. though. Right. If it did slide, it was the first slide of the weekend because we have not seen one ball slide yet. But if it did slide, it was in the spot that Emmett just tried to clean up earlier. Well, you said that
players don't need to wipe the floor. You get so upset. I agree. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey guys, I agree change to disagree. your shirts and gloves. Well, referee just gets a point in his favor for that. Look at that shirt. Certainly I mean, play. he doesn't need to wipe the floor, right, when he goes down? No. I mean, why would he wipe the floor with a shirt like that? Wow, that's not even a shirt. That's like a wetsuit. He can't even take <laughs> it off. I mean, he just got done surfing. Big surf. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have a break. We'll be back in two minutes for game number three of this men's quarterfinal match between Emma Pichot, Marco Chavez, forcing a tiebreaker. We'll be back in just a bit. Stick with us. More handball here at raceforeight.com and ESPN, the Watch ESPN app. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. What's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just, I, there was a, I had just came in just for a second. Come on, man. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point there, Smokey. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. The Tucson Racket and Fitness Club is your home away from home. Work out, relax, and refuel. All this and more can be yours. Call us at 795-6960 or visit TucsonRacketClub.com. The Tucson Racket and Fitness Club, where country club road ends and fitness begins. about this Vegas icon. Elevate your expectations at the Stratosphere Hotel, Casino, and Tower. See what's new, up, down, and all around. Hey, Marcus, uh, you can't appeal the bad bouncer, just so you know. No. No. <laughs> no, he just read the rule. <laughs> All right, Emmett will be serving. Emmett's not turning the ball all the way. I think he has one kill shot. 
tiebreaker to 15, win by two. We are back in here for game Zero, number three. Zero. Emma Pichot gets that first serve, and I think we're going to see a rejuvenated Pichot. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Marcos comes out with the return of serve, flat kill in front of Emmett's face, and Zero, he gets Zero. that side out. We're going to 15, win by two. Marcos, 41 years of age. You know, a lot of people might say, well, Emmett has the advantage because Marcos is 41, Emmett 32, but, side you out. know, studies have shown that as you get older, your, your endurance actually improves. It's the starting and stopping that you lose, the ability zero, to recover. Zero. But I don't think conditioning will be a factor at all for Marcos. Well, he proves that he has the shots. Well, speaking of shots. That was impressive. I know you talk about the inside out, but what would you call that, Dave? The One, inside zero. in? <laughs> yeah. He pulled that ball. And that's Marcos' second return of serve kill in this tiebreaker. It's hard to hit one return of serve kill in your life. And that was his first with his offhand. Zero, one. Wow. Point. That's impressive, Dave. Marco Chavez, Southern California. Emma Pichot, one, Northern California. Z one, one. Round of eight. Terrible serve. Side out. Emmett didn't do a lot with that poor serve, but he did win the rally. One, one. This match, Dave, is Point. being played at a really high level. And this, as soon as I started saying that, we saw a terrible air. Two, one. It's called the pre announcer's yeah. curse. Even thinking about it is enough. Terrible shot from Emmett, and that should be an avoidable. That's an obvious avoidable. It's such a setup. I gave it to you. <laughs> it's setup that Emmett didn't get away out no. of the way for. That was a clear avoidable. And Marcos is right there. I mean, I, I saw a setup, but it, Three, I mean, one. you're looking down over the top of the players. Of course, you get to see it from a different angle. It was a huge setup, but I let you have it. No. You can stop completely. But why? Well, Marcos got Three, the answer. One. You can stop completely. See, Marcos is now <laughs> pointing to God. The handball gods now know that. That was a nifty move, how he picked up that ball. One, Dave. three. I see 70 year olds, 70 year olds doing that down at the club. Yeah. I thought it was more nifty of Marcos pointing up to the sky. Mm. I just thought those were part of the shenanigans. Completely shenanze. insulting the referee. Oh. Right out. And Emmett with a complete miss hit. Shrugs it off. That's also part of the Emmett show. Emmett's actually. Three, one. A different guy here in this match. Especially compared to last night in the antics. Both agree. Four, one. That was a screen. Oh, and that's a late call. Marcos is not going to like that. Things just seem to be going against Marcos right now. And that was one of those calls, Dave, that could have gone either way. Marcos hit a great shot. Emmett with a tomahawk overhand right down the left, and Marcos goes right back. Nope, ball hit Emmett, he said, on the way up. Marcos is not going to be happy about that. That might be that rare one that you can actually appeal that you didn't say, Dave. That's the one. Well, I knew we'd find it. <laughs> I don't think we could appeal that one, though. That I think you probably Four, could appeal one. if you thought a ball didn't hit somebody, mm, right? I guess you're right. You know, Dave, in college tennis, they had to eliminate the lets on the serve because all the players were 
saying that on every A serve that, well, it was a let. You know, so they had to actually do away with them. Wow, that ball skidded, I that's thought. Um, he's going to call it a screen. And now that's a, screen. It's, that's a payback call there for Marcos because that Four, ball one. probably. I thought it slid, but. Well, I thought that was beyond his reach. And that's not a good shot from that. Well, Emmett's dictating everything that's going on right now. Thank you. And Emmett calls two bounces. Well, you know, Marcos has had setups in every rally in this game. Hasn't been able to, to put the ball down. Emmett's playing One, steady, but four. I think a little bit too safe right now. Marcos going to junk time there, just kind of moving Emmett side to side, and unfortunately for him, lost the rally. Sometimes, Dave, you get too creative, trying to be too inventive out there. Four. Is it wet or broke? What's going on here, Dave? I heard the referee say, is it wet or broke? Four, one. Oh, terrible air. Point. Terrible air there from Marcus. Five, one. And this is getting away from Marcos quickly. I know we're going to 15 here. That's unavoidable. Well, you were in front of him. Not there. You were directly in front of him. You can go either two feet to the left or all the way to the right. But you were right in front of him. <laughs> I don't know, Dave. I think uh, he was to his left there. Pretty uh, significant. That probably would not be called. <laughs> there were some avoidables in this match. Don't get me wrong. But I, I don't I know about that one. one but Six. One. I don't you, know you about that. You were lobbying for a two earlier, Sorry. but that one, on the other hand. Yeah, that was. That looked like Emmett wanted to go down the right wall and miss hit it more to the left. Yeah, it d didn't seem like a And hit Marcos. Because that is not where Emmett wanted to hit that. If Emmett hit that where he wanted to, it would have gone right back to Marcos. Point. Emmett had the whole right wall open, and he elected to hit Marcos with it. Seven, one. Kind of odd. Seven to one. See where Emmett becomes elite. Play like this. Eight, one. Marcos slapping Emmett's hand there after that good shot. Side out. One, eight. You have to remember game number one, Marcos almost Got a donut from Emmett. Scoring just one point in game number one. Coming back to win game number two, now getting dominated by Pichot, eight to one. Eight, one. Going to try and get Emmett back on his team here. Yeah. It's kind of a pro wrestling mentality. He's the heel, then he's the face. <laughs> Second serve. Of 
forget, Marcos has to play another match right after this. Referee tried to stop play and did. A little bit of contact. Both players tied up with each other in the deep court. This is a very long round of eight match. One, eight. Average length of match time so far to start the day, just 31 minutes. Now we're already at an hour and 15. And you know, these long matches that Emmett has, Dave, a lot of fans don't realize he also warms up for about 20 to 30 Two, minutes prior eight. to that match. That you see. I mean, yeah, that you know of, yeah. yeah. I mean, this court was open for 25 minutes. Emmett worked the referee to allow him to keep warming up for an additional five to seven. Eight, two. Point. Your, what are you feeling? Football to feel, both disagree, one short. <laughs> Can Emmett then reappeal to the the booth? Well, I would say yeah. Yeah. I mean, I he's throwing the red flag on. He doesn't like the decision. Uh -huh. If you want to waste your appeal on that, absolutely. Side out. Two, eight. Second serve. This is where playing the tiebreaker to 15 makes things really interesting, Dave. Point. Now this, three this is far from over. You know, you start pecking one little point at a time, and three, it could eight. look uneventful at the moment, but then Marcos did this in game number two. Eventually got the win. I thought that would be a back wall setup, but just didn't take it. I think Marcos is tired. Oh, he went for that flop shop and missed oh. it. Side out. Marcos was trying to do a little fancy kind of Dave Chapman type big ball shot, but missed it from the deep court. Time out. Time out, Emmett. All right, the score is eight. Three. Players are given one 30 second timeout per game. 30 seconds. And two 60 second timeouts. Well, I'm not sure Marcos realizes it's 30, but maybe he does. You don't normally see a player leave the court either way. I, um, this might be the first time I've seen it. Watching the race for eight, brought to you by Edel Handball at edtlhandball.com. That's that's time. Referee calls time, but there's Marcos finally coming in. Resuming play, eight serve, three. What happened here? Oh no, okay. Pichot now scoring his ninth point. Marcos looks like he's completely gassed. I think Marcos is more frustrated than anything right now. Feels like he's had a couple calls go against him and he's not capitalizing on his opportunities. He was nearly flawless in the second half of the second game, with the exception of, of a few errors late in that game. <laughs> that looked like a horrible dive. <laughs> My, Marcos just looked like he went to sleep after he hit the ground there. No injury, just, Dave, you did it before. You dove for a ball, and the floor felt so good, you just want to stay yeah. down there, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, just exhausted. It's like, I have not even any energy to stand up. Very quiet right now. Nine, three. Short. Thought Emmett would appeal that. Appeal. Both agree. Second serve. Wow. 
right out. Marcos owns that right corner, particularly Three. with the revolving door. Three serves nine. Just over the line. Short? No, it was definitely uh, good. One disagrees, mm. one agrees. Let's take first serve over. What? Oh, my. He can go to us on this, right? Yeah. I, not that he would, but let's go ahead and get that instant replay up because that ball I was over the line. Short. Referee said, I thought it could have been short, and thought Marco says, then why didn't you call it then? You already <laughs> no. You want to do it? Video replay. Okay, this is booth. official now, as it should be. It will be a good ball. Go back. It's not good, though. I don't no. think it is. I think it is short. Yeah. How deceptive is that in live play? Now let it go down and actually hit the ground, because right there it's still in the air. Just, it obviously looks short, but then it doesn't. It's hard to tell here. I would say it's short, Dave. Right there is where it comes back up, and it's on the red. Looks short to me. Yeah. Short is the call from our actual fan. The results are in. It was short. Second serve. <coughs> hard to be any closer than that. Yeah, Three, that nine. Definitely hit red. It's the closest call we've had so far. But Dave, isn't that strange? Live, it looked like it was over by four inches. Mm -hmm. Side out. Very strange. Nine, three. Short. Second serve. Marcus was sitting on that second serve. Three. Nine. Dave, if you like Marco Chavez, Football. this is your day, because he'll be on this court for at least the next hour and a half. Second serve. And he's playing the senior version of Emmett Pichot in his next match. So you can right expect out. another. Well, I don't see him winning that next match. Oh, well, I've got some sand Nine that says otherwise. Three. Well, some of that sand will be my sand. I have my way. Hmm. I actually brought some sand with me here to the office. So, ten three. And, and people say, well, you know, why would Marco Chavez even be in that bracket Point. to have this possibility of going back to back? But that's because of the blind draw. You, there's a 50-50 chance he'd be in the upper bracket. If he made the bottom bracket, he would be playing at three o'clock today. Eleven three. Just no, but it wasn't a blind draw because when you're number one, you're in the top. No, but it, from the oh, other I way, see. from this side, he could have been on the lower side oh, of the bracket. Okay. This all Point. came out differently. See, Marcos thinks that's unavoidable because, yeah. well, he was called with one earlier. I didn't think so. And now Marcos is saying to Emmett, come on, Emmett. Marcos. Marcos, did you? Hey. Of course we'd like to see a replay on that. I'm not sure what the referee's trying to get from Marcos here. But 12 serves here's the three. replay as Marcos, Emmett standing there, Marcos. Oh, no. That's not even close to an avoidable. No. That was just a shank left-handed shot from Marcos. I'd be surprised that ball would even make the front wall. Yeah, I don't think it would have. And Emmett seems to be able to summon 13, his nerves three. in the tiebreaker. He lost the second game yesterday, he was Short. out of sorts. Came back and won the tiebreaker 15 2. Both agree. It was short. The fist pump really gave it away that it was short. I mean, if once you see the fist pump, what's the point of even going through the process? Second serve. Footfall. Oh, my. And a side out. And look at Marcos clapping his hands in Emmett's face. You know, we really should have the Three, players mic'd up 13. because there, I think there's more going on. Football. There's a huge foot fault there. Yeah, Emmett hates that foot fault call. Second serve.
Point. There's a point. It's been a while since Chavez put one on. Maybe in golf you should just be able to tee the ball up like 100 yards in front of the tee box. I mean, who Four, should tell you that 13. you can't go in front of the line? Right. I mean, tennis, you can just stand on top of the net and serve. How does Emmett not win that rally? All he had to Point. do was flip it to the right. Instead, he flips it right back to Marcos. Probably not going to matter at this point, though. 5-13. Hey, this match has only been one hour and 20 minutes, but it feels like about eight hours. Yeah, it's <laughs> just another one of those long Emmett Pichot matches, 13-5. The very last round of eight match of the day. Emmett was two points from making the finals here last year. He led Derman Nash eight to five in the tiebreaker and just gave that match away. Ended up losing an 11 9. He'll have five another chance 13. to go to the finals here if he scores two more points. He might get those Side sooner out. than not. And the tournament organizers now starting to think about putting 13, five. that Andy Shad Nadi Alvarado match on exactly at three o'clock as planned. Just foregoing the the other match on this live broadcast. Well the tournament broadcasters would like that break. Well point. Worst things have happened. 14-5. Marcos tried to go for it, doesn't get it. Tiebreaker win by Emmett Bichot as Great he match. now advances to face Paul Brady in the upper bracket semifinal at 5 o'clock this evening at the 4 o'clock central time will be the Sean Lenning Luis Moreno match, mm -hmm. which is going to be delightful. And I, I would assume that the crowd's going to absolutely pack in for that one as well because yeah. both of those guys are fan favorites everywhere they go. So I'm gonna write that down on my scorecard here. And the score of that last one was 15 to five. 15 to five, so Marco Chavez only scoring one in that first game, comes back, wins game number two, 15 to 12, and then only scoring five in that third set. Amit Pichot advances and will go into the semifinals. Marco Chavez completely spent we are going to make that executive decision and put mm. that Andy Shad, Nadia Alvarado, 3 o'clock match on at 3 o'clock and allow Marco Chavez and Tyler Hamill to fend for themselves on one of the back courts mm. somewhere around the club and, uh, you know, give that extended rest. We we also have that 4 o'clock Luis Moreno-Sean Lenning match, yeah. uh, and, then, and then Brady is going to go up against... Uh, uh, Emmett Pichot here, and that's also going to be exciting as well in the sense that those two have faced each other, it seems like, a lot lately, yeah. and never know what we can we can learn from that. So let's go ahead and take a break. We are going to be back with more handball action from Houston at the YMCA here on ESPN, the Watch ESPN app for Dave Fink. My name is Dave Vincent. We uh, appreciate the fact that you've tuned in here. We'll have another match coming up in just a bit. Stick around on this app, and also tell your friends to tune in as well as we at the World Players of Handball thank you for tuning in on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.